Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today we're gonna do some panel lining. We might even do some pin washing and black lining. We're gonna put nice bold lines in between some armor plates to make it all look good. This has become one of my favorite techniques. It's straightforward and anyone can do it. It's basically just tracing. Line by line, we're adding contrast and definition to our models. In this video, I'm going to show you 9 different materials that you can use for panel lining. They all work, but they each have their own look and feel. I've got a couple of favorites that I want to share with you. So panel lining is frequently used by scale modelers working on vehicles, but it's also a really useful technique for armor and power armor. For this video, I'm standardizing everything with one model from Loot Studios. Loot and I worked a little back alley deal. If they put a funny face on a character with armor panels, then I'd use it in this video. Loot blew me away with the design they came up with. It's beautiful, and it's also wonderful for experimenting with black lining. If you like this model, you can download it for free from the link below. It fits with Loot's sci-fi bundle from this month. After I printed the models, I primed them with light gray and gave them a dusting of white ink. This video should also give you some ideas on how to paint a decent stormtrooper. After this was dry, I did a few light coats of gloss varnish. The gloss coat protects the paint and ink, and it increases the mobility of the paints and washes that we're gonna put on top. The gloss coat will also allow us to wipe away mistakes, as long as we're quick enough. While I was prepping models, I took some that printed really well, and I gave them nice bright colors. Once we pick a favorite paint for black lining, I'll show you how it looks on these. A few of these printed a bit wonky because it's been cold in my basement, but they're still plenty good for test models. I gave these a full day to dry, and now they're ready to run some experiments. I'll start by showing what panel lining isn't. It is not an all-over wash. This is Nuln Oil, a water-soluble wash from Games Workshop. It collects in the deepest recesses, but it also stains everything. Our whole model is now many shades darker. Maybe that's what you want, but maybe it isn't. Now let's do an enamel wash. This one is from MIG. These use organic solvents as paint thinner. The surface tension is much lower than water, so they run all over the place, especially with that glossy varnish. What's cool about these oil washes, though, is that you can come back later and wipe the pigment off of regions where you don't want it. I'm just using some Q-tips and mineral spirits here to restore some of the armor plates to a bright gray. This is a cool look, but again, it might not be the look that you're going for. And now, it is time to show you the glory of panel lining. I've got two categories of products, oil-soluble and water-soluble. I'm starting with Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color. I'm loading up my brush, and I'm going around the model touching the grooves in the armor. This is essentially an oil wash. It has low surface tension, it moves fast, and it fills up those little channels all on its own. For most of the grooves, I only need to touch my brush a couple of times. A little bit spills over the edges, but for the most part, it goes into the deep recesses right where we want it. Again, we have the option to use mineral spirits to clean up the overspill, but it's really not a big deal. If the color on this model were darker, we probably wouldn't even notice the mistakes. Outlining the white armor gives a ton of contrast, and it looks good. This is so much cleaner and snazzier than the all-over washes. This is the joy of panel lining. Let's try the MIG panel liner now. This is also in the general family of oil washes. For all of these experiments, I'm using cheap synthetic brushes. Washes, and especially oil washes, can get up into the paintbrush ferrule, and that can damage the brush. Hence, I'm using nice cheap brushes. This MIG wash is also runny. I'm just touching it to the grooves, and it's working on autopilot. In addition to the obvious lines in the armor, this stuff works at the borders between objects, and anywhere where there's a nice right angle. This model has a ton of features that look great when they're outlined in black. Next up is homemade oil wash. This has been popular in our hobby for the past couple of years. It's a mixture of paint thinner and black oil paint. I'll drop a link to Vince Venturella's channel as a good starting point if you're interested in learning more. The exact behavior depends on the mixing ratio, but again, we have an organic liquid that seems to have a mind of its own. 
Just touching the brush to a groove or a corner can deposit a nice sharp line a centimeter or more long. Most of the pigment goes where we want it, but not all. It can be hard to control, and sometimes it'll flow out over the flat areas. Often, a small amount of pigment gets deposited on the outer edge of our lines. Not a lot, but it is noticeable on this white armor. So here are the three figures that I used oil washes to line. The painting process for all of these was surprisingly fast, and didn't require much skill. I put my trust in the wash, and just tried to avoid getting too much on the flat parts. You can see they all have different levels of pigmentation, and this is really a matter of personal preference. And of course the pigmentation for the homemade wash can be strengthened or weakened if we wanted to. Okay, let's step away from the oil, and get back to some water-soluble paints and washes. First up, Nuln Oil. Despite the name, this is an aqueous wash. It's nice and thin, and I think there are some surfactants in there that make it run and penetrate a bit better than water. Even so, it doesn't jump forward to fill the grooves in the armor the way that the organic washes did. Applying this water-based wash is a much more deliberate process. I need to actually trace all of the lines. I have more control this way, but it also takes longer. Of the water-soluble products that I'm using, this is the one with the lightest pigmentation. I've been painting the ribbed under armor at the elbows and knees to help compare pigment strengths. The lighter pigmentation allows us to be subtle with some of the borders and shadows, but in general, I think I prefer using products with more pigment. Citadel also makes a line of thick washes called contrast paints. This makes clear, bold lines. I've used this for black lining before, and it works pretty well. Now, the Venn diagram for the terms panel lining, pin washing, and black lining has a lot of overlap. Earlier in the video, I think we were panel lining and pin washing when we were precisely dropping in those thin washes. But now, these bold black lines I'm putting down are starting to be a stylistic choice. This is what I think of as black lining. Strong outlines that define the shapes on the model and look awesome, even if they don't totally make sense. I also have an early sample bottle of Army Painter Speed Paint here, and I wanted to give it a try. As expected, it's very similar to the contrast paint. The paint is going where the brush puts it. I'm tracing each line all the way down. It takes time, but I have a lot of control in where the paint ends up. Of course, this also means that the mistakes are all my fault, and I can't blame them on a runny wash. With this gloss varnish though, we're normally able to wipe off the mistakes as long as we act fast. Now beyond the grooves and trenches on the armor, the contrast paint and speed paint both left beefy lines at the right angles and other joints where I tried to put them. I could have used a smaller brush, but I actually really like how the models look with these thick black lines. Next up is black ink from Vallejo. Okay, I could instantly tell that this was one of my favorites. It gives a similar look to the contrast paint and speed paint, but I love the way it flows off of the brush. I feel like I have a ton of control with this stuff, and it looks great. I had so much fun with this black ink that I used it to blackline the red, blue, and green troopers. These colorful minis don't contrast with the black ink as much as the white armor does. The lines aren't quite as dramatic. On the flip side, all of my little mistakes are much harder to see. Again, the ink is only going where I put it, so all the mistakes on these models are totally my fault. I've been drinking too much coffee recently, and my hands have been more shaky than normal. So if I can do this, you can do this. We're just tracing the lines and angles and boundaries that are already on the model. Now, I'm vaguely aware that there are serious art forms that are all about ink. From calligraphy to comic books, ink is good stuff. Speaking of inks and comic books, I took a break to re-watch some videos from Epic Duck Studios. Mike often paints minis with this comic book style. Lots of fun colors, and lots of bold black ink in between. This style is sweet. I'm tempted to get really into black ink one of these days. I don't own any bottles of Mike's favorite ink, but I do have some black Liquitex ink that I want to try on another test model. Normally, I use this for airbrushing shadows but it turns out that it works quite nicely on a paintbrush, too. 
Actually, this Liquitex ink feels even better than Vallejo ink. I am really enjoying these inks, and I'm going to try to work with them more in the future. Okay, I had one test model left, so I decided to complete the cycle by just using some black acrylic paint. I chose Proacryl Black because it's relatively thin and goes on smooth. Black paint works just fine. Not bad at all. You probably already own some black paint and know how to use it, so the barrier to trying out this technique is nice and low. Alright, so here's our batch of white test models. There's some variety in how thick and bold those lines turned out, but all of these products work. It's a very different look from the all-over washes that we started the video with. The high contrast of the bright armor and those dark lines is a lot of fun, and it makes the shapes on the armor easy to read. Any of these models could be taken from here and painted up to look pretty dang nice. As a finale, let's check out how this black lining looks on some finished models. I took one model from each color and I painted on the rest of the details. The armor is still just the base coat plus panel lining, but it looks good. It looks cool. Obviously panel lining takes way more time than just putting a wash over everything, but I love how clean the end result is. It could be better if I drank less coffee, but even with shaky hands this all turned out pretty nice. I decided to take this one step farther and add some highlights to the armor. Now we're talking. The combo of base coat, black panel lining, and highlights is a straightforward way to really make this armor look sweet. I love the design of this model. If you like it too, you can click on the link in the description and download the STL file for free. The model was designed by the fine folks at Loot, and it matches some of the troopers in their sci-fi bundle from this month. They come pre-supported at 75mm scale and 32mm scale. In this video, I was using the 75mm scale. I think they're absolutely gorgeous at this size. Okay, here are some takeaways. Oil washes are runny. They do a lot of the work for you, and they do it fast. They're also great on right angles and some of the tricky border areas. The trade-off with oils is that you lose some control. Also, with oils, you need to have paint thinner on hand to clean your brushes. For the water-based materials, I really like the feel of working with inks, and I love the way they look. It takes more time to trace the lines, but you also have a lot of control. I encourage you to find the perfect level of caffeination and give ink a try. So yeah, Hopefully I was able to talk you into trying some panel lining and black lining. It's a bit time consuming, but it's straightforward and I love the results. Well that's it for this time. Thank you all so much for watching.